Well, good morning, everybody. It's 10 a.m. local time here in Las Vegas. And this is the Las Vegas Open quarterfinal action, the men, and what a high-powered match we've got in store for you this morning. If you've gotten up early, well, you haven't won the lottery. You're just catching two of the very biggest names in the game of pool. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Fedor Gorst. I'm Jim White's gonna be bringing you all the action along with the Iceman himself. Coming to you from New York, Mika Imminen. And Mika, uh, welcome. Hey Jim, good morning as well. Uh, even though it is afternoon here in New York, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. What a great match we have coming up here. Fedor and uh, FSR, two of the, uh, two of the like, most consistent players in the last couple of years. Uh, I'm expecting, uh, I'm expecting a really, really great match here. Now, just to get things underway, Mika, do you remember where you were last time these two guys played? Um, I've got a feeling you were in the crowd watching. Hmm. Was it? Uh... Do you remember? About, about, it was a Friday night. I don't remember if it was the Las Vegas Open. It might have been the World Championships. But these two locked horns. And I've got a feeling you were sat with Joe Rogan in the crowd watching these two. I feel like it was Fedor, but it was uh, not uh, FSR. It was the um, Kachi, Lenti Kachi. That well, that was, was the final. But you were with Joe, oh, I think, because Joe had come down to... I think it might have been the match before. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But well, uh, we'll, I was there we'll for... Just, we'll... well, I'll tell you what. I, I have a funny story about that. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it. But that was a pretty good break by FSR there. And uh, winning the lag. He's got a 1-9 a combination on offer, but uh, tricky. Not easy to negotiate position to the one if he does decide to attack and checking to see if he's got any pocket available. But so, so important to get a good start in these matches. Yeah, FSR really puts his whole body into that shot and he hits it with such accuracy still. Uh, it's, it's really uh, quite, um, quite impressive. Yeah, he might just have half a pocket available for this one. The right-hand side of that corner pocket as we look, but at best, half a pocket. Yeah, is, did he call the one? The nine combo could be, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Combo is better. And yeah, nicely controlling the one as well. Yeah, that's Well, I was going to tease you. No, no kidding. But I was going to tease you about that, Mika, because I remember Joe Rogan. I, th I think you were sat beside him, and I thought it was this match, but I could have been wrong. But I know Joe Rogan had come to watch Fedor, but he, uh, I think he left you and came up and commentated with me. So I was going to, I was going to tell you, well, he left you for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, stop. Um, yeah, it was fun. I was giving him the play-by-play. -play -play. For a minute, I think in the previous match, uh, I was able to sit with him the whole match, and then in the, if that was the finals, then that's when uh, he deserted me for you. What a shame! <laughs> he deserted you for me. Okay, well, I'm gonna chuck that. One just made a mark on my wall. <laughs> well, big chance here for friend though. As I said, so important because of the the nature of this format. You really want to keep your opposition under heat. You've got a chance to do that. that look oh, what Fedor Gorst is capable of. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised he wasn't able to hold uh, the position like near the side just to settle for a little longer shot. And now he's got a bigger angle, but I guess... The angle's okay because you need an angle on the six anyway. It's easier to come around three rows for this shot inside English. Uh, 
and we will be crowning a Las Vegas Open winner later today. This quarterfinal action, the semifinals will follow. And the winner of the Las Vegas Open will take home $30,000, $100,000 the total purse. So pretty good for four days work. Yeah, he's got kind of a 50-50 position here, whether he should just draw back a little bit or just settle for the side pocket. I guess the angle allowed him to roll nicely through there. Clinical. Started it out with a 1-9 combination. That laid the brickwork, but a clinical run out from FSR there. Never in danger. 1-0. Still two out of three sets. Each set a race to four. And if in the third set we get to 3-3, three, three, well, we get a shootout. We've seen plenty of those, and both of these players, funny enough, have identical records through to this quarterfinal clash. They've both had two shootouts, so they've survived two scares en route to this quarter. Yeah, that sets them up a pretty uh, even, even Steven for uh, on the paper. It's hard to say who's the favorite. Yeah, this could well be determined, Mika, just solely by whichever one of these two enjoys more success with the break. Yeah, and Sanchez really breaks well from the side. Not that Fedor is uh, in slouch there, but um, he, he just really gets so much power. Check out his follow through here. The ball stopped just for a, just, it was just parked right there, but uh, nothing. Yeah, I think he got the, the four into the oh, corner pocket, kicked yeah. in. That's a pretty, so again, it's a pretty good, yeah. Now, not being on site, I know that uh, Francisco travels with David Alcady, and uh, I didn't see David Alcady's name in the draw, so. Oh, his, uh, his good luck charm and his roommate may be watching from long distance. And if he is, welcome to the show, David. We hope you're enjoying this. Big hello from both Meek and myself. Look look at here, though. Like I think he get, wants to get fairly straight on the three so that he can clip that cluster while leaving himself position on the five. Because I, I'm not sure if the six, eight is like really ideal. Maybe he can clip it a little bit while maintaining control of Brack. He can get fairly straight on the three and just one rail and clip the eight, maybe. What do you think? Yeah, that's a chance. I mean, got to be developed. That six is definitely Fedor's insurance policy as it sits. But you can bet that that's exactly what Francisco's weighing up right now, the best way to attack it. And where yeah. the five is, Look at the he's cubo. going to wait too long. Right, where the cubo is right now would be a nice position, actually, that angle or similar. He's left a little bit more. I guess he can put inside English on it enough to grab. Sometimes the slide gets you too much from this angle. Or he's eyeing the combo now. That's an option. It's a tricky combination, though. 
I think you're right, Mika. The angle, he left himself a little too much angle on the three, so he almost has to go up the combination here where the six is. Yeah, the, uh, it's deceiving from the TV to see how much room he has for the 10, but it looks like it's pretty close to the rail and it's not, it's a thin cut. Got to be careful not to touch that ball with his shirt. Oh, good shot. 10 in and a 2 nothing lead. Dream start for FSR. Yeah, so far the only shot Fedor shot was the lag. Yeah, I think though, I think you were spot on. If he would have come up a little higher in attacking that three, he'd like, because he even looked at the rail to see whether he could check the cue ball enough to flick the six or the eight and clear them both. Well, FSR are feeling pretty good. Fedor maybe didn't get enough sleep, just catching him yawning there. <laughs> yeah. At least he's relaxed. <laughs> he always looks relaxed. Every time I see him, he's all business, that's for sure. Very, very professional. He is the consummate pro, young Fedor Gorst. Without a doubt, the future on nine ball and ten ball. Yeah, he is really the he's the current and the future. Who knows how long he's gonna reign? Lost the cue ball a little bit forward there, but. Got lucky and got the uh, Ferrari. He'll take that. Yeah, tons of power. Uses his legs. Much like a lot of the European players. Flamingo esque on that one leg. Yeah, Federer just looking at where to push. For, yeah, he, he might push for a jump, you know, knowing his uh, jumping skills. Or just create the cluster and uh, distance. Maybe a bit of both. Well, you know that Francisco knows how well Fedor Gorse jumps. Yeah. You know, if I'm Francisco, I'm taking this shot all day because you, you can't you can't leave this for Fedor. He's just too much of a favorite to make it. Fedor may think twice about pushing into a jump again. Great shot from Ruiz there. Yeah, so far he's uh, had like 100% um, pop success. Control. Yeah, that one great shot on the one has opened the door.
keep positional shot here though, Mika. He wants to be just off straight on that five because it looks like the six certainly goes by the eight into the same corner that he's going to be looking at this four ball. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Fedor was trying to put the eight in a position where this uh, was, was more difficult. But it's still, uh, it's, it's a bit tricky here now. I think the best shot would be if he can hit the six full enough to even double kiss it. Otherwise he's gonna go, might go behind the eight. And that's... There we go. Yeah, got the double kiss. Uh, left himself slightly hampered over the eight. Yeah. Well, that was nicely that was like, controlled. That was one thing he couldn't couldn't control where the cue ball is. He had to take the double kiss, you know. And that was just uh, something that happened in conjunction with that. Now he's just got a long seven ball. Question is that do you shoot this shot with a left spin and come around or just like cinch it in with a center, kind of a center draw? into this match as well prepared as he's come into any. Yeah, he's uh, exuding confidence. And this, remember, the clearance from the push out from Fedor Gorst, pushed into a jump, successfully executed by FSR, and he took it home. Three nothing, the advantage now. Our opening set. Yeah, what a start for FSR. He's really just pulling all the stops. And a quick look at the tail of the tape. Overall performance, 99%. The table time, sorry, 99% to 1%. Fedor's really just had that one push, hasn't he? But yeah, it's been masterful to, to say the least. Yeah, a lot of people getting out of bed early here. 10 a.m. this match started, and we're just 20 minutes into it. And already 3 nothing. The Spanish superstar. Being that it's Vegas, maybe some of them have never even went to bed. Guarantee them a good seat. <laughs> right? Are we going to see another jump shot here? This is uh, that, or maybe kick and create distance, come around the table. I feel like the one rail, you know, kick shot is not a bad option. You can just catch a piece of that one ball. You either make it and get position coming around the rails, or you you uh, get safe. He hits a little bit thicker.
Irish. Not easy, though. Yeah, he's, no, not at all, but he is going to be frozen Fedor out in this match. and Maybe he's posturing to put that. Give him a lifeline at all. Yeah. The same shot is still there, but he just put the cue ball in a different position a little bit to uh, improve the odds, maybe. Now, if you are Fedor, what you do here? Do you, you know, is he is he really jumping this? One ball. Extension. He has to land so precisely on that one, just so it doesn't uh, jump off the table. Well, he's the best I've seen with a short cue, but this would be a tall order. Yeah, because it's the longer version of the short. Unreal. Unreal. In my mind, I did not make him favorite to make that shot. But as you See said, he landed lands on it? perfectly on the one. That's insane. You can't leave this guy any jump shots. Period. Enforced. Yeah, that's just a lack of table time, I'm afraid. As great a jump shot as he played, he just hasn't had a chance to really get that back arm going, not under the match. Not under the match circumstances anyway. Hit a lot of balls in practice, but never the same. Yeah. And the pressure has been mounting as, you know, FSR is on the hill this first set. It wasn't easy to come with a good shot there. And he's perfect again. Cueing right over the 10. And he needed a thin hit on this too. Get the white back for position to the four. And I think he's got a little angle to be able to get that cue ball up for the five next. to do here but it looks like again perfect <coughs> yeah he's really got the speed of the table down throw the rails all these angles are perfect So far, the best play I've seen in this tournament. Now, if you want to know how to play this game, you'll be able to watch this match on YouTube. And you can witness a master class performance. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 4-0. The opening set closes it out. Fedor Gores yet to bother the scorekeeper. Still a ways to go in this one, Mika, and I promise you, FSR has taken nothing for granted. As one-sided as that first set was, he knows his opponent is capable of turning the tables. Yeah, and when you look at the numbers here, I mean, I feel like even though the runoff percentage is 95, he's like 100% when he's trying. Well, the 
see they changed the numbers there. Yeah, it just went to 100%. Yeah. Maybe they heard you. I think maybe they did. Well, Fedor needs a good break. He needs to start the second set out with a good break. Nothing easy here, though. One ball's up into the corner, but it's, it's a tricky shot. Does he get a little kiss on the two or not? I believe so. shot and taking it on clearly illustrates his mindset yeah he's not gonna he's not gonna try and back into this match is he he's gonna go through the front door and that was a great opening shot yeah he's oh both in the top just top. tried to feather that 10 and He's gone the wrong side of it, so the short cue will be coming out. For sure, and he has to worry about, like, I'm not, you know, not, never in doubt he's going to make this four, but where the six is, he has to get pretty nicely on the five. not gotten any easier for him you know that was a great shot again right into the heart of the pocket with the jump cue he's got a pretty steep angle on this five and as you said Mika he's almost got to be dead straight in on that six yeah the jump landed a little short he didn't get enough power off the rail but he's elected for a safety and he has not managed it well Same problem with the six faces FSR now. Yeah, but his angle is really ideal. All you have to do is make this in the corner and then you should be landing near that first diamond past the side. Unless he chooses to go to the short side. Short side it is. Makes more sense maybe being that the six is so near the side. Just showing you with his cue where he wants to follow through. Just about to that first diamond past the side pocket.
Well, so far he hasn't put a foot wrong. When I watched him play in Puerto Rico last year, and he won a world title there, and he won the world nine ball title, and he came to Las Vegas with the chance to own all three world titles. Got beat in the final by Cachi. But I think he laid stake to his claim of being the best on the planet right then and there. And certainly his name, they look where it is in the draw every single event. And he's playing a man right now that many people feel as you said, Mika, he's the present and very likely the future of pool in the world. So take a good look and remember when these two face off because this is special. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> but um, FSR is making a statement here really um Impressive shot making, impressive how he handles himself, uh, nice tempo, it's just, he looks very hungry and he's just going in a nice flow. And he's always got that sort of demeanor around the table, like he's really enjoying himself. That's always a secret for success, isn't it? Yeah. Friends at the table that time. It's still nothing easy one here. Thing, the one thing that Fedor Gorst guaranteed us of last night is that there was going to be a new champion in this year's Las Vegas Open. Victor Zelensky fell to Gorst. Fairly easy save. Almost accidentally made the four. And it looks like he's left the window even. Again. Be able to make the one off the six ball could be uh, could be ideal. like it's getting any easier that was a great opening shot yeah super tough shot and it's uh, I'm not sure what he's gonna do with the two ball here if he can if he can avoid the nine Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting back just smiling as I see this. This is just unbelievable stuff. Yeah, he's just in full control here. And some of these shots are like low percentage. Uh, and just it's making it look like a walk in the park. Uh, Got to be very precise here. He's 
going to need to get this cue ball right on that top rail. Yeah, center off the top rail. Just like this. It's landing a little short. Uh, not, okay. Yeah, not nearly hard enough. Oh. First mistake. Surprised, you know, his speed control has been so perfect. He wanted to, like, make sure that he hits the back rail. Better to come off uh, the three rails than uh, landing short. Huh. Wow. That was a very small yeah, it's window. Also it's, it's also very difficult to be in your chair watching this because every time in a shot like this, you, you kind of move to the edge of your seat thinking, okay, I could be I could be getting a chance here, and then you slouch back into it again. So he's kind of, he's beating you up in a couple different ways. Yeah, what a teaser. If he runs out here, he main, maintains his 100%. A lot of people thought that FSR would be looking at the world number one Josh Filler in the quarterfinals here, but Canadian John Mora dispatched Filler to nothing and then was summarily beaten 2 nothing by FSR last night. But the way this man is motoring right now, nothing's going to stop him. 2 nothing in the second set. Already won the first set 4 nothing, And he looks like he is on a mission. Well, Mika, you see any errors there that you want to point out? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, the runoff percentage, I guess the, the dry break takes the percentages down. But as far as what he's trying to do on, a, on a, an attempt at shot, he's always made it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you, count, if you count... If you count the break as, as part of your run out, then, um, then absolutely. But he hasn't missed anything. And even when he's run out of position, you know, that kick shot on the six pulled him out of the soup. So here we go, rack number three. Great break. Tough shot on the one. Maybe Karim the three ball in. Keep going. I don't know the way he's going. He just wants to uh, keep Federer on his seat. He's weighing all the options up right now. Certainly the Karim on the three is one, but no guarantee for position to that one yeah position would be extremely tricky if he can uh, carry the three in and then hold the one near the same side of the table by Flip in the five, and then it could be an option. One ball. 
Yeah, you can say that again. He's welded it behind the six. Well, Fedor was hoping to get out of his chair. But he's not too thrilled with what welcomed him to the table. And he's not the favorite to hit this. And that's the reason he's bucked that three right in behind the six. Just trying to make life difficult for FSR. I mean, that, I was looking for yeah. all the different escape paths to hit that one, Meek, and I couldn't find one. Yeah, that was actually a good shot from Fedor, but, you know, um, he's uh, not sure what's going on here, but he's not going to like what's happening next. He's probably going to be behind the, the 10 and then. FSR is trying to clear the cluster. It's going to be on the nine. That's, that's a great shot, actually. Good thinking. Fedor doesn't hit this one, he's on two, and it's going to be so easy to play another safe and possibly get 3,000. Well, he's feeling pretty confident in his chair, and why not? He's yet to drop a rack. How about that? That's crazy. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think F FSR just had a had a word with him too, and that's brought a smile to Fedora's face. But how about this? <laughs> wow. That's insane. I mean, we could be going back to that shot and remembering how he defended there and if he can change the tide here because it would have been most likely 3-0 and FSR on the hill breaking and possibly just you know whitewashing Fedor but this could be the turn mistake well, massive mistake <clears throat> Again, I can only, just to give him an excuse, Mika, I can only say it's just such, you know, he's had such little time at the table. Yeah. I will give him the same excuse. I thought he could have clipped uh, the one the other way and just send the cue ball around the table. Mm. Leave the one behind the six, the three. Yeah, not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, maybe he's, maybe his uh, head is a little bit foggy. He's been just watching the, uh, the onslaught from FSR. Might have clouded his mind a little bit.
a little bit more angle than he wanted, but it's, it's probably fine to come three rails. Just he'd like to be in that exact position after this shot. overrun it, but it turned out perfect. Definitely did not try that. <laughs> and he's giving a little uh, smirk. Yeah, when when it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And when it rains, it pours. Three, nothing. And breaking to close this match out 4-0, 4-0. Who would have thought that? So many in attendance here were, were hoping for something very memorable. Well, they've seen it, but they certainly didn't expect it to be as one-sided as it is. few chances and very few chances that Fedor has had to try and turn it as you said Mika that brilliant escape on the one that could have been the turning point he had a chance to really put the handcuffs on FSR and a very poor safety effort threw that rack away yeah I mean, if, if uh, FSR can run out, break a run here, it could be one of the, I mean, one of the truly more, more remarkable performances we've seen in a long time. Looks like he could be doing something like that. Look at the cue ball control. Trick, tricky to navigate to the two ball for position here, though. wonder if he can get like a stun draw and then come off the 10 back towards the middle. Extension. Uh, just calling for his extension. Definitely warrants a uh, lot of thought this shot. Yeah, <clears throat> I like drawing off the 10. Still not easy to control that. He's following up with him, that works. Did he get far enough? That looks good to me though. As good as he can hope from there. Thin cut on this two around the back of the nine. And if he lands on the three, this might be over and out. He's on the three. <laughs> He's made that everything look so uh, easy. It's a complete whitewash here, possibly. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Mika, apart from the way you played that one year in the U.S. Open. Well, this has been something that uh, certainly for me, as long as I've been commentating professional pool, another one of those moments that I won't forget. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting chills here. This is uh, this is like uh, obviously I'm not nervous for him, but like this, I just want to you know it'd be nice to see this finish end perfectly. And it's it's been on a tear the whole match. Just beautiful shot making, beautiful decision making, and uh, just coming with everything. Yeah, I think Fedor will be the first one to tell him, too, you know. I don't think anybody was going to beat you today, FSR. Certainly not yeah. in this match, anyway. Well, 52 minutes into the match. Over. Early lunch, Mika. <laughs> A performance wow. for the ages. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, four nothing, four nothing, and takes out Fedor Gorst. An unbelievable performance. And if that doesn't send a message to the rest of the players left in this event, nothing will. Madness. Yeah. Memorable. And I mean, you all the accolades you could possibly say. Goodness gracious, uh, I, I, I just had to clap for that. It was just so, it's just so beautiful to watch. That was just astonishing. Well, Mika, we will be back, and we're hoping you'll be back with us. There's still lots of action to go. You've got semifinals coming up, and then the final later today. Thanks again. From Mika Eminen, I'm Jim Weich, and hope to see you again soon, folks. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jim.